Jerusalem is full of it. Here, soon after the Second World War, archaeologists began to uncover what is now known as the City of David. Today, it's frontier territory, on the border between Arab and Jewish Jerusalem. Right on top of the ancient site is a new Jewish settlement. At first glance, it looks just like a pile of rubble. But if the Bible history is true, these walls were built by King David and Solomon to defend the capital of their great kingdom which stretched from Iraq to the Mediterranean. So the wall here would be protecting the palace behind us. Right. People uh, live and build the buildings under the palace. As we see here, it's a uh, uh, rooms the people uh, live. And the area is around the time. The, the, the some Israelis feel they need this science to prove the Bible is a historical record and that this land is their land. How important is it for Jews in Israel to be able to show that the walls of David existed and David existed? The beginning is start here. When we arrive here, we start to build our country and Jerusalem was the most important. So this is the basis, the religious basis that we stand on, on it. So this is where it all begins in the stones. Yes, it's it's, all, it's not only stones. I mean, you can we can see only stones, but it's the the, the basis of uh, our religion and basis of uh, our land, our uh, country. This was Royal David City, like the one I had sung about at home. And at first, the archaeology seems to confirm the Bible stories. But not all archaeologists are so convinced that you can dig up Old Testament tales in a modern excavation. One of the leading experts has dug for years at the ancient site of Megiddo. He has a big problem with the idea that the Bible is a When people came here to Megiddo and other places in the Holy Land, the idea was to look for evidence for the biblical stories, to look for a decoration, to look for a manifestation. That is to say, you have the biblical story, they don't put the biblical story as the ultimate truth, and they only wanted to decorate this truth with the you know, beautiful finds, with the monuments, and uh, there was no thinking about, you know, the power of archaeology to verify the real events that took place, you know, in the second or in the third millennium. So biblical archaeology rubber stamps Old Testament history. Exactly. The biblical archaeologists thought they had found evidence for the magnificent kingdom of David and Solomon, which the Bible says held sway in the 10th century BC. If you believe the Book of Kings, this was when much of the Old Testament was written down. But Israel Finkelstein says the dates simply don't match. We are standing now in what's called the Solomonic quote unquote gate of Megiddo. So this monument, uh, you know, was described as the Solomon of the Solomon and a manifestation of the grandeur and the glamour of the United monarchy. However, the gate probably dates to the 8th century BC, and Solomon is supposed to be in the 10th century. So you have two centuries between Solomon as a historical figure in the world of Solomon, and the gate, which is much later. So biblical archaeology got the dating of the Solomonic gate completely wrong. Solomonic gate and many other monuments, because the whole dating, the whole system of dating of the strata, archaeological strata, and the monuments related uh, to the period of the uh, United Monarchy a little bit before and a little bit later was, in my opinion, a bit completely wrong. This is a bombshell. Archaeology now tells a completely new story of Jewish origins. No big kingdom, as the Bible tells us. No exodus from Egypt either. Just scattered small settlements in the hills. In the north, these developed into a kingdom called Israel. In the south, there's another called Judah. Its capital is Jerusalem. But it's not at all as the Bible tells us. First of all, you look at Jerusalem, what you see is not a great city, not a capital of a great empire, 
You see a small village, very well limited in number of people. A small village? A small village, very well limited in number of people. There's almost nothing there, few pieces of church here and there, and not much more than that. And then also, even more important than that, in order to have a text, you know, so powerful and so elaborate and so advanced, you need to see evidence of inscription. Archaeology does not provide this evidence. I mean, literacy comes mainly in inscriptions and writing and tribal activity. All this comes much, much later, centuries after the days of Abraham. More bombshells. We lose not just King David and the Exodus, but all the Genesis stories too. Abraham's promise, Isaac and Jacob, all of them now have a question mark beside them. It's one thing to consider stories about Adam and Eve and Noah as mythical, because they are those kind of stories. But if Finkelstein is right, as I think he is, then it's much more serious. I decided to resolve the matter by taking a closer look at the book, the text itself. Was it what it claimed to be, a unique testament, the word of God, or was it just another piece of literature? Mm -hmm.